everybody. Happy to have you here to talk about Curved. Jürgen already promoted me uh, on the stage and uh, told about the session which is about uh, how we were building this thing within 100 days and why we did it. He also he already told some uh, overview information about that but I would go a little bit more behind the scenes uh, and a little bit more into the details. Mm. Because we have such a small group, so when uh, I feel very comfortable whenever you have any questions, just raise your hand, just interrupt me. Uh, happy to answer things. Would be very, very happy if we get into a discussion about content marketing and how we are doing things. So feel free. I've got a couple of uh, slides with me, uh, but we don't have to stick to them. So you already heard uh, what Curve is about. It's uh, a portal about mobile technology. It's an initiative of E+. We did it together with uh, a couple of uh, service companies. One of them was um, Sinar Strada, which is a media agency in Hamburg. Another one was Content Fleet, which is providing some of the technology also based in Hamburg. And the idea is to have a portal about mobile lifestyle. And uh, the portal was supposed to be a little bit different than the other tech websites and so we didn't want to get uh, pictures which are of the size of my something or a font size of four or something. We want to do it uh, with more photos, more entertaining, uh, not too nerdy, more like a magazine. So we were thinking of if GQ would do something about technology, how would it look like? Um, and focus very much on how people use things, not so much about the technology behind it. So uh, if we're talking about a phone which is water resistant, uh, we are talking about an outdoor device which is different. And uh, how where we can use the things for this was the idea behind it, which is my role in this project. I was kind of like the interface between E plus as the customer paying all the things and the agencies and trying to coordinate. Why did we do it? Um, Jürgen already told roughly some things about this. Uh, if you look at the market, um, how you can reach your customers, especially in the sector of uh, telecommunication, you find that the prices for reaching your customers are rising extremely. And it's not only at Google, it's at all the platforms. It's at Facebook, it's for their display advertising, it's at uh, the affiliate platforms, and the reason is that there are auction mechanisms bringing these prices up, and there are just too many bidders on the other side. And for E+, this is even worse, because they have got a couple of brands in the market, like Europhone, like Base, uh, like Smarkov and so on, and if they are trying to attract customers due to the auctioning mechanism, they are even bidding against themselves and rising the prices. And this is, uh, can be easily seen if you look at uh, this example. Um, this is shortly before the Galaxy S5 came to the market. And if you Googled Galaxy S5, you would have found uh, Vodafone, O2, Telecom Base, One One. Uh, on the first page of Google. And if you try to get in there, you just have to pay a lot of money. This is why E Plus thought it might be a good idea to create an own digital destination to bypass uh, this auction mechanism. This is for sure that we won't be able we won't be able in the short run uh, short run to replace the other channels, but we can uh, add some reach to the e plus group without uh, going into this auctioning mechanisms. And because of the way how we did curve, um, we can add some other information into the sales funnel of uh, e plus. If you look at content marketing, you basically have two uh, approaches how you can how you can work with it. It's all uh, about reaching your target group, this is always uh, the main idea, but you can do it in completely different ways. 
you can try to promote your brand um, and not necessarily this promotion of your brand has to do with your products. Um, if you look at Red Bull or Coca-Cola for example, they are doing uh, they are not doing things around, around refreshment drinks or lemonade. They are doing things about music, Formula One, Skyforce, and this kind of thing. So they are uh, just using interesting contents and they are associating their brand with it and they are um, increasing the brand awareness and the brand uh, like by using content marketing. We decided for another way. So we are on the right side of the chart, which doesn't mean that they are on the wrong side, they're just on the left side. Um, we are on the right side and we very much focused on um, the content is, which is related to the products of uh, E+. Uh, the brand is not really visible on the platform. The platform is named curved, it's not named um, base mobile or something. Um, you will find base in the imprint because uh, it's an initiative of, uh, of the group, but uh, you won't find it apart from advertising spaces uh, on the platform. And this gives us this concentration on, the, uh, on topics which are very closely related to the products of uh, E+, and the companies of E+, gives us certain opportunities to uh, add some values to uh, the plus group. One is market information. Um, we are writing about um, products coming up much earlier than they are really at the market. So we see um, if people are interested in this kind of things. So if we are talking about um, crowdfunding initiatives, um, we very early find out that it's wanted on the market or we also find out that things you may, may think of that it's very, very interesting and it's not interesting at all. Um, if you look at, uh, for example... How do you do that? Um, we're testing. We are, um, I come later to the point how we find the topics and then we're sending out the topics to, to our community and then we we monitoring very, very closely this is used and how does it go further uh, from our platform, is it shared, is it liked, and so on and so on. We also have on the, on the platform a mechanism where the user can state um, his, his uh, emotion about the content with, with the tag, very, very easy. You can say, well, this is, uh, this is lame, not interesting at all, or this is very, very cool, or I want to have this, and so on. And looking at that, you, if the, the number of users is getting big enough, you get quite close information or something. And this, is, this information is transferred to the purchasing department of uh, BASE because their problem is if they want to put something in the shops, uh, they need weeks to get it, uh, they need weeks to bundle it to the tariffs and so on. And if they are then have uh, 10,000 units of something in their stock which is not wanted at all, um, it's not the best idea. So we try to help them in advance. Is this interesting or is it not interesting? You can do this uh, in other ways. You can just by yourself monitoring what is out there. But uh, here uh, you get some some insights from us, and you have the possibility to kind of like technically connect it, connect it to your infrastructure. Second thing is marketing reach. Um, Jürgen already showed that we, for example, promoted um, a special bundle which um, base design, which was the Scarman uh, navigation system together with an iPhone. Um, we have ordinary ad spaces for uh, SmartCalf, which is also a brand of the e Plus group, and base uh, are regularly seen. Um, and we also do special offers. So um, we have special prices which are just available at curved or for curved users for uh, E plus items. This is useful for both of the companies. For us it's useful because we use it for promotion purposes. We tell the people, well, here's something special to come to curve. If you come here regularly, you will find uh, special deals. 
uh, but it's also useful for the plus group because again, uh, on at the moment a quite small scale on the testing field, we can see does this work? Is it an interesting product? Is it taking off or is it not? What we also uh, support is audience checking. Um, this is very interesting. The Plus Group is using retargeting mechanisms like Zalando or all the other big e-commerce companies. Um, and we provide them with the information about what kind of devices did someone read articles, how intense. It's all anonymously, uh, for sure, but um, this makes it much easier to get the right offers to the person. Because, especially if you look at mobile, you've got uh, at least uh, two divisions of customers. The ones are the Android users and the other ones are the iPhone users. And it's completely useless to advertise an iPad to someone who is addicted to Android. So, and your chance is 50-50 before you know something about this person. Um, and we provide uh, E-plus with the information which kind of content did the customer use. What did he look at in the higher frequency? So you can see if he's interested in certain kind of gadgets. You can see if he's interested in iOS or um, uh, or an Android. You can see if he's interested, more interested in uh, LG or Samsung. So we're going very, very much into details. Most of the information is related to uh, concrete products. Next thing we, we offer is money. We're getting money from uh, advertising partners. We would even take uh, Vodafone or the German Telekom as an advertiser on our portal. We wouldn't have any problems with that. Uh, I don't know if they want to come to us to give us the money which is going to A plus then and telling us which kind of offers work and not. But uh, if they want to, they can. But um, which is uh, what's very, very obvious is that we can work together with you know, companies like Sony or Samsung. And so on. We've got a target group which is highly interested in uh, these kind of technology, these kind of gadgets, and this is why we are open for partnerships to them. And they are, there are some partnerships to come. Um, what kinds of ads do you um, have on the platform? Do you also do yeah, we do native advertising stuff. We've got uh, normal IEB formats like uh, rectangles and full page ads. We don't do any layers. We, we just think uh, at the moment that it's kind of like annoying and not necessary. We very much focus on the other values. So ad revenue is just one stream. Uh, but what we also offer is um, uh, editorials. So we give the products to our editors and they are, uh, they are marked as editorials because we don't do any Schleichler work. Um, they are uh, marked as editorials, but what is special about this is that we have an own photo studio, which is taking very, very pretty pictures of uh, products. And most of the time, these pictures are even prettier than the ones you get from the, from the press department. Um, and they are, for sure, they are different. So very, very um, detailed um, photos of the products, very shiny. And, and the companies like that. So um, this is also part of um, the advertising package. And you can also be exclusive in one of the uh, sections. If you say, well, I want to be exclusive in the smartphone section for, for a while, and these things will Exclusiveness is also something we sell. So this gives a package which is not really comparable to something you can buy at the market. And this is uh, necessary because even if we are quite successful, and I will show you some figures later on, we are still not uh, so big that we can earn billions of euros by getting paid in CPMs. Uh, and the last thing is commerce. Um, we are bringing people into the shops of uh, E+. -plus. How, how are we doing this? Um, almost every article we are writing is related to some kind of product. 
and we've got a technical solution with a database behind it where we connect the articles with, uh, with the products and uh, find out if this product is available at one of the base uh, smart call Zimbio uh, shops, one of the plus shops, and then if it's the case, it's shown uh, with a price. If it's not, Amazon is shown. Just like that, okay. um, but to get me right, um, that's the way it works. The way it is, our editorial staff thinks some kind of product is interesting, it's going to write something about this product. And then we are looking if it's uh, at E plus uh, or not. If it's not, it's also fine because we very much focus on what is interesting to the customers. The editorial team is completely independent from, from E plus. So you're not in the media on the pressure to design perfect stories in order to sell products? Not at all. Uh, unless we are talking about an editorial, which even for a plus we would mark as an editorial. The, uh, the example of the um, Garmin navigation system was also marked as editorial. And editorial independence, in my opinion, I will come to the success factors later, but is the success factor. Because uh, <coughs> if we would not be editorial <coughs> independent, it would just take a very, very short time and uh, the, the customers would be not interested in our information anymore because they know that this is not uh, an information for our editorial stuff and it's an information for the press department. So how did we do it? Um, what did we have uh, on the 28th of 2013? Uh, basically nothing. Uh, empty sheet of paper uh, and a rough idea which uh, what should be built, a mobile portal. Um, no technology, no people, no content. Um, Jürgen told that it took four months from um, having the idea to launching the portal. Uh, in fact, 25% of this time uh, went by by the decision process within E+. So to build the portal, uh, we had three months, 100 days. So 100 days later, um, we launched. It was 5th of February 2014. What we had then was a uh, team which is based in Hamburg, uh, in the offices of uh, the Sinatra Agency, a stable IT platform, which is actually as clean as it's shown there. We, we are recognizing this, even if it was built very, very quickly, we recognize whenever we want to change something, that it's built um, very, very structured and very clean. It's very easy to uh, enhance features and to change things, which normally is not the case if you are developing quick and quick. It's getting, uh, you're getting live very fast, but uh, changes are taking very long. This is not the case at all, because we've got still very, very short development cycles. Uh, it happens very, very often that we um, have an idea of a feature on Monday, which is live on Thursday. Uh, and we had a really quick website with lots of content. We had around uh, 500, yes? Where did you find the team in 100 days? We had the advantage that uh, Sinner Schrade as an agency is working with freelancers uh, for a long time already. So they've got a stock of freelancers. Uh, and still, if you look at the editorial team, for example, uh, the whole editorial team is about 10 people, 5 people is uh, things, analytics and so on, after 15 people. Still only 5 of the editorial team are really employed by Curve. The others are still uh, working as freelancers uh, and partly working also for other projects. So we've got a very, very flexible organization and uh, even the people um, are changing a lot because the, the needs are changing. In the beginning, our technical team was staffed a lot differently than it is now. 
there was no one for operations and things, for example, in the past, because it was just not uh, interesting. There were more developers than we have right now. We've got a very breathing organization, and we're we using um, uh, service companies to help us also for content generation. Not all the content is written within the uh, newsroom of Perth, some of it is written uh, from by other companies and delivered to us. Uh, coming back to the uh, to the contents, so we had something like five to six hundred content pieces at the start. We, we had news, we had reviews, we had um, tips, we had uh, profiles in our product profiles in our database, uh, and we acquired a lot of content. Uh, we acquired two domains. I've got one domain from A Plus, where we had something like ten thousand articles at the start. Use that articles to gain first traffic on the website. What do we have today, uh, which is already yesterday <laughs> and not today anymore? But uh, by now we've got uh, up to 100,000 unique users a day, and it started uh, quite quickly. It took off uh, somewhere here, you can see, and then it developed um, very. Uh, very nicely, and uh, you can guess what this is, what the change, Google recognized us. So uh, we went into the news boxes of Google, uh, and this started um, the growth. Did you change your uh, themes for that? Sorry? Did you change your subject within this uh, time? So, um, and, and all the traffic, uh, this is very important, is organic. So we didn't, um, we didn't buy anything. We did some Facebook marketing, uh, but not for gaining traffic. Uh, but the reason was more we want to explore because the targeting opportunities in Facebook are very, very nice. We want to explore uh, what is interesting to what kind of people. So we sponsored some posts into the Facebook community and got some traffic from that. But then we are talking about uh, less than a thousand bucks per week. So really big budget. What I think is uh, why is Curve so successful? It's because of the fact that Google likes us. And why does Google like us? Because the user likes us. There's a lot, there are a lot of talks of uh, SEO. Is it good or is it bad? In my opinion, uh, you have to think about the intention of Google. The intention of Google is someone is searching something and the thing he's finding should feed his needs. As soon as it does that, Google is happy because they know the customer will be satisfied and the customer, the customer will come back and search again with Google. If, if he always finds things that are not of interest for him, he will use another search engine. In a foreseeable amount of time. So um, I think uh, Google and SEO is not bad at all as long as you're not using any tricks. If you're doing it really by focusing on the user, um, I think it's quite a good thing. It's even help how people today are searching and thinking. Um, what we are focusing on is um, our contact, uh, content concept is not so much like uh, in this kind of ad of the, of the past, focusing on the technical details. Uh, this is describing uh, in, a, in a very detailed level how this car uh, is working, but it's, it, may have been, it may have been made right in the 70s. Maybe people didn't trust the technology and wanted to know how things work, um, but today, the people just want to, in my opinion, just most of the people just want to know how they can use things and how they work in detail is not so interesting. And maybe the comparison of these two things uh, can can explain the difference. So I'm short.
So what the lady does is uh, she was sending a message to her navigation system um, trying to find the place where she wants to go and uh, in my opinion it's not interesting how this works exactly. Uh, it's just interesting that it's working and that it's helpful sometimes. In this case it's not really helpful but normally it is. And this is how we think uh, of the content. But even if you have this clear concept, there's still uh, a lot of work to do. And um, what I told you was that I will um, give you some, in some insights how we managed it in one hundred days. We were really talking about how we got the personnel just by having a very, very um, breathing organization and being uh, happy to to see change also in the organization um, because we, we couldn't offer anything. We just said, well, we are doing a project for the E-plus group and as you can imagine, E-plus didn't say, well, we're doing this for the next 10 years, but they had a certain test period and if you try to get people out of their running contracts, even if it's an interesting project, it's kind of like difficult, so you have to, to find uh, other ways. And we had a lot of things to do. As I said, we, we are not only producing the content, we also were building the technical platform and we had to organize the processes because uh, the deal was not um, building the platform, getting the team and giving the whole thing to E+. Uh, the deal was also running the platform and developing the platform. So we also had to set up the processes and things. And, and how did we do it? Actually, our, our project approach was not very fancy or, or modern. It was really, really old school. Um, there was a lot of paper involved and a lot of talking. Uh, and you could think of all these fancy, nice collaborative uh, tools um, to get project communication and so on and to get the thing running. What we did uh, for, the, for the communication and the organization of surrounding was we were getting all the people in one room and we had a wall which was as big as that wall where all the designs, all the parts of the website, all the steps we want, wanted to do were visible for everyone, every time, which is a very easy form to, to communicate with the people and then we're having uh, daily stand-up rounds and everyone was in the morning telling <coughs> what he was going to do. You know this from from tech development projects and the scrum process and we uh, rolled it out to the whole organization also for content generation and, and all the things we did. So the technicians didn't know what the uh, content department was doing, the analytics guys didn't know what the tech guys are doing. Everyone knew everything, which is possible if you have an organization of 15 to 20 people. Uh, and I think you should if you, if you look at the organization of a team, you should very much look on how big it is because um, uh, you need very, very different methods to get teams working depending on are they in one place and how big are they. What we did in planning was uh, also very, very conservative. We did an overall project plan. We had this 100 days. Uh, we did weekly iteration cycles uh, in the development and in the reporting and just cut the whole thing into small clear tasks. And that's a saying that you might know, how do you need an elephant a bite of time. So very, very uh, small tasks. And what we also had in our project management, we had a counter in front of the main door of our office which counted down from 100 to, uh, to, to 0. So everyone knew how many days are left to get the whole thing done. Just the huh? <laughs> uh, It was basically the same room I was showing at the beginning. But you only see the team. But what you also see is our wall. This is the wall. There are all the designs of the website while we're going into the wall. Um, yeah, it was a nice room. It was so like it was so like heated uh, and um, so much windows in there that everyone from outside could see what kind of like technical equipment is in there, 
uh, and uh, and you got <laughs> and you got um, uh, robbery twice <laughs> during, <laughs> during the campaign. So uh, there are also not everything about transparency is, uh, is always good. Uh, looking at the team, mm. due to the fact that we had a lot of freelancers, this meant that these people are uh, very circular. They know how to do their work on their own. They know how to find the work. Uh, they know how to complete it in time. Um, so this was all also very helpful and we tried very, very early to clear up the, the responsibilities, which is, in my opinion, uh, very important. If you have a short time, can't waste time by doing things twice. So we have to make clear who is doing what. And uh, this daily stand-ups stand uh, also help very much because uh, if someone tells you, I'm doing that and that, or yesterday I did that and that, and uh, you find out that he did the same thing you did, um, you, you should ask, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> uh, to don't let it happen to And what are we doing today? So how do we uh, drive um, traffic. Jürgen already said that uh, monitoring is very important, relevance is very important, uh, and it is because if we look at our editorial stuff, uh, every person can just write one article at a time. So uh, we have to find out if we want to gain reach, and this is our main goal. As you have said, at the moment we are uh, we have around one million unique users per month. Uh, if we want to gain reach, we have to write the article which are within our uh, within our environment, but um, the most interesting one from there. And therefore, we are monitoring on a very short basis, which is an hour. Uh, what are the topics uh, the social media is talking about? Because we think um, the events in social media is a very good uh, indicator for things that are interesting. And it, it will help that the people also share the content. No, no. This, is, this technology is bought by one of the, uh, is built by one of the uh, companies supporting us. Uh, and, and we, which is also important, is we integrate this technology very closely to our um, content management system, which makes it possible for the editors to use uh, this kind of searches because if you have uh, a bunch of people analyzing uh, topics uh, in the social media and then telling other people these, these are the topics to look for then you already lose time and uh, you lose information so you have to make researching so easy that your editors can do it. Uh, this is what we also did with uh, the SEO topics. We put a lot of rules of SEO in our um, in, in our content management system and if these rules are not followed you can just not publish the article. So we don't need an SEO expert telling the people to do this and that. We, we try to do these things by tool support. And these this platform uh, uh, was also built uh, especially for Curve but it's uh, also available for all other products. So you just to sum that up. You can see what what is what what are topics in social media yeah. regarding uh, mobile phones, regarding uh, a lifestyle, regarding a set of um, eight thousand keywords, which are interesting for us. But um, they are in different categories. There are something like twenty five, which are really the most important keywords for us, which are mainly product names and uh, brand names. And these we are looking very, very closely, and uh, the other ones we are looking on different equipment or we group them up and so on. But, uh, in the end, we're looking at something like 8,000 keywords listening to social media and also looking at Google search, search volumes and so on, and also looking at uh, other publishers. So, and as soon as you found out that the special topic is interesting, you decide to cover that with your own content. Yeah. Which is sometimes an old story, which is sometimes uh, just a creation of a uh, story which is already there. We, uh, the good thing is, um, 
websites of this style and uh, this kind of approach where use case based with a lot of photos and so on, you will find in English a like the word the word mm -hmm. but you won't find it in German. So if you doing uh, US, uh, US content due to the time shift and the uh, the language um, you're doing it in, in German, you are still could be one of the first persons telling in that way about that. So uh, looking to the US is also very important for us. And uh, we also monitor this very, very closely uh, afterwards. We're looking very closely the projections we had about the articles, uh, did they come true? Do, do the stories we thought that might work did they really work? Or do we have to adjust our keyword set? Do we have to adjust our tools? Do we adjust our, have to adjust the interpretation of, our, of the signals uh, to get the research we do uh, in advance uh, in a match with what we see on results on the, on the website? And we're looking at uh, the, the, it's the same wall actually uh, we saw earlier on. Uh, where the, all the designs were um, placed at. Uh, today at the same wall we've got an, a bunch of uh, information systems that are also um, visible for everyone, every time. So everyone in the team uh, will have every information about the traffic development of Curved, always. Is that the overall average? 32 for mobile? This is pretty much uh, the overall average. This was a little bit of a mobile topic because it was about um, it's, it's a very new shot, it's about the uh, FIFA World Cup and we had some um, articles out there about streaming a game if you can't see it at home. This is why the mobile part is a little bit higher than normal but it's around 25% at least. It depends a little bit on the topic. So the traffic is very, very mobile, which is good um, because uh, it uh, shows that our customers are very modern in their way of uh, consuming our contents. But it's bad because of the fact if you try to convert these mobile customers into, uh, into shops, uh, it's getting very difficult. So the, the desktop traffic is converting much better than the mobile traffic. Can everyone can ask himself, would he follow a uh, shop link on his mobile and getting through uh, an order process on the mobile phone? Uh, not very often. And this is what happened. Uh, I was showing you this slide before, which ended here. Uh, looking at the launch date at the uh, Galaxy Samsung Galaxy S5, you found out that the space the E Plus group had on the first screen of Google uh, increased a lot just by curved getting into uh, the news box of, uh, of Google. And as I said, Google is the most important traffic source for us at the moment. And it's still, most of it is still news based. This is uh, why we are looking uh, also to the US to get fresh information and fresh news. Uh, but this will change. Uh, I'm quite sure that uh, Curved will um, in the future months appear much more often also in the organic search index because all the signals are showing us uh, that Google is liking the way we are doing the content because of the fact that the user like it. Uh, and this will bring us into the organic index too. So to sum it up, uh, what in my opinion are the su success factors of, uh, of Curved? Looking at uh, the processes, it's just very, very important in my opinion if you want to do such kind of portal where well, our intention is not to win the Pulitzer Prize. We, we want to gain traffic for our customer. And this means that you have to be very, very data-driven. Um, and you, in my opinion, need a 
strong support by your technology because otherwise it's just very, very difficult to get uh, efficient. And we, as I said, we're still doing a lot of changes on the website design and so on. And also these changes, um, in, in our case, uh, doing the concept for a change takes longer than bringing it to life. And in most companies, it's the other way around. You have an idea and it takes years takes years uh, until you have it on your system and luckily here it's it's the other way around because our platform is very very uh, and our approach is very very agile and uh, we really do releases every week so it's the platform is constantly changed for example uh, we just changed the appearance of our products on the website in terms of how do they link to uh, the shops of the E plus gr group. And from one day to another, we doubled the traffic we could deliver to the E plus group. And if some such kind of feature request take, takes ages to come through, and then probably doesn't work, and then you have to find the next idea and the next idea. Because what I didn't tell, we changed the site already um, two weeks before, and there we decreased uh, the traffic by 10%. So you have to do a lot of tests, and therefore you need to be uh, you need to be quick. But the main success factor is a product um, looking for relevance, uh, trying to find out what is worth spending editorial time on is uh, very important, and as I said, the editorial independence. As soon as the people think that we are just writing uh, things to please the E-plus group, they won't use us anymore. <laughs>